this video we're going to talk about some of the fundamentals of radiation. So you can reference uh, chapter 12.1, chapter 12.2, 12.4, and 12.5 in your book. Um, you can skip the section on intensity, which deals with uh, directional effects. So we've talked about radiation in very general terms. The official definition is that thermal radiation is electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation that's emitted by a, a body due to its temperature. Uh, we also said that thermal radiation is unique and that it doesn't need matter. It can occur in a vacuum, and that's not the case for conduction and convection. We could talk about it in terms of particles, photons, or packets of energy. And when we think of nuclear radiation, that's often what we're talking about. We talk about alpha particles and beta particles and neutrons. We can also talk about things in terms of waves. So if we look at figure 12.3 from your book, we can see the spectrum of radiation. In this section, we're not talking about the high energy radiation, such as gamma radiation or x-rays, which are the, hot, the forms of high energy radiation that can penetrate through human tissue. We're talking about thermal radiation, which is highlighted here in orangish red. And that's the radiation that's emitted because a body is above absolute zero. We can see that that thermal radiation falls between 0.1 and 100 microns, which you can see on the axis here. And those microns refer to wavelength or lambda. You can also see that a small portion of, the, uh, of that is in that visible range, about 0.4 to 0.7 microns, and that's the number, that's the number is kind of approximate. Um, visible just means that it's detectable by the human eye, and typically that's somewhere between 380 and 740 nanometers. That wavelength is related to the frequency by this equation. C is the speed of light in the medium, and the medium, if that medium is in a vacuum, um, then C is expressed as the constant C naught. And you can see by the expression that the frequency and the wavelength are inversely related to one another. Now back in chapter one, we introduced the concept of a black body. We said that a black body is a perfect emitter, so the emissivity is one. Now take a look at figure 12.12 .12 in your book. Um, on the x-axis, you see the wavelength, and on the y-axis, you have the emissive power. Um, EB lambda is the spectral black body emissive power of that black body, which is what the B stands for, and it's expressed in watts per square meter per micron. Note that, that uh, the emissive power is actually a flux term. It's the rate at which radiation is emitted from a surface per unit surface area per unit wavelength, hence that micron unit. Um, also note those two subscripts, B is for black body, lambda indicates here that it's spectral emissive power. Um, pay attention to the language here, it's very important. Spectral just means that it's wavelength dependent. We're talking about something at a particular wavelength. Um, so here's the formula for uh, the spectral emissive power. C1 and C2 are constants. Uh, figure 12.12 .12 graphs that as a function of lambda of wavelength. Now it looks really complicated, um, but if we integrate under one of those curves, let's just take the uh, a black body that's the temperature of the sun, for example, which is about 5,800 Kelvin, we get something that looks really familiar to us. Um, and if we go back to the figure, we notice a couple of things. First, a black body at a higher temperature emits more energy at a given wavelength, and that makes sense intuitively, right? Um, second, for a given temperature, there's a wavelength for which that spectral emissive power is the highest. In fact, that maximum spectral emissive power at a given temperature and wavelength are related by a simple relationship called Wien's displacement law. Make sure, of course, uh, to put those uh, temperatures in absolute temperature units. So objects at room temperature, for example, emit most of their radiation at 9.66 microns, which if you recall, is in that infrared region of the spectrum. Now, if there's no additional light, sunlight or artificial, I cannot detect the radiation um, at that wavelength with my eyes. But if things around me have sunlight on them, I see that the sunlight emits most of its radiation, most of its power in the visible spectrum, and my eyes are detecting that radiation from the sun that's reflecting off the various surface, surfaces. And that's why I can see objects at room temperature if I have natural light. But the radiation that's emitted from those room temperature surfaces is not detectable with my eyes. It's only due to the natural sunlight that, flat, that reflects off of them. All right, 
So I know I can integrate under the curve at a particular temperature to find the total spectral, i.e. integrated over all of those wavelengths, um, the, emiss the, the spectral emissive power, uh, which breaks down to that Stefan Boltzmann law, the sigma Ts raised to the fourth power. But what if I'm interested in just finding out how much energy is emitted by a black body between certain wavelengths, maybe not just between zero and infinity. Um, so in that case, I'm going to look at the emissive power um, that's emitted by a black body at uh, 5800 between or, or at 5800 Kelvin between lambda one and lambda two. So I don't really need to integrate this ugly thing. Uh, it turns out that somebody has already done the work for me. So let's look at table 12.2 and we can see how this will help us figure out that spectral emissive power of a black body at a given temperature between two wavelengths. That first column go that first column is just the wavelength times the temperature in Kelvin and the second column is the fraction of emission between a wavelength of zero and a wavelength of lambda and of course that denominator in the equation since it was integrated all over all the wavelengths is just that Sigma TS to the fourth power you see that as I increase the range of wavelengths that I'm looking at from zero to some high wavelength which would give me a high lambda T that fraction uh, of emissive power that I'd be considering would be higher too. But what if I want to know the fraction of emissive power between two wavelengths? So I'm going to take uh, the fraction of emissive power from zero to lambda two, and then the fraction of emissive power from zero to lambda one, and then the difference between them is the fraction of a black body at a given temperature between those two wavelengths. Um, and just as a note, those last two columns are referring to the radiation intensity. That radiation intensity comes into play if we're considering direction. And in this class, we're not really going to consider angles of incidence or reflection or anything like that. We're only going to be concerned with surfaces that emit and reflect in uh, all directions evenly, independent of the angle. So directional effects and the intensity, that's not going to be um, considered here. All right, so a black body is a perfect emitter. It's got an emissivity of one, um, and we can use that uh, to we can we can use the things that we just now talked about regarding the emission from a black body, along with the emissivity to figure out emission from real surfaces, surfaces with emissivities that are less than one. A black body absorbs all incident re radiation, uh, regardless of wavelength and direction. So let's talk about that for a moment. We know that objects emit radiation, but they are also interacting with other things that emit radiation. And when that radiation hits the surface of a body, several things can happen. This is figure 12.5 in your book. So let's look at all these components. Any incoming radiation that hits or is incident on the surface is called irradiation. And once that radiation hits the surface, it could do two things, or not two things, it could do several things, actually three things. Um, it could be reflected. Uh, the uh, fraction of a radiation that is reflected is called the reflectivity. It could be absorbed, and the fraction of a radiation that is absorbed is the absorptivity. And finally, it could be transmitted through a medium. And that fraction of a radiation that's transmitted is the transmissivity. For an opaque surface, that transmissivity is zero, and for a completely transparent surface, the transmissivity is one. Um, so as you would expect, the sum of the reflected, absorbed, and transmitted radiation, they need to be equal to the incoming radiation. And the sum of the fractions of irradiation that are reflected, absorbed, and transmitted have to be equal to one. So let's take an op opaque surface for which you don't have any transmission. Let's relate the, that radiation Let's relate that radiation emitted E because the surface is uh, above absolute zero. So you can see that the total amount of radiation that is leaving that surface is J, the radiosity. The radiosity is of course the emitted radiation which is written in red um, uh, plus, uh, plus the, uh, re the reflected radiation which is highlighted in yellow. And next we define the emitted radiation according to uh, the Stefan Boltzmann law using the emissivity which could be anywhere from zero to one. Uh, and it would be of course one for a black body. And then we also note that the reflected radiation is the reflectivity rho times G 
the irradiated, irradiated radiation that is incident on the surface. And then finally, noting that rho minus one is negative alpha, we arrive at the exact same equation that we took for granted way back in chapter one. All right, so we get to the third uh, characteristic of a black body. Although radiation emitted by a black body is a function of wavelength and temperature, it's independent of direction. That is, the body is a diffuse emitter. So a diffuse emitter radiates equally in all directions, as you can see highlighted here. Um, that's in comparison to a real surface, which is going to emit more strongly in one direction than the other. A, a diffuse emitter spreads that emitted radiation out, out in all directions um, and um, independent of or, or independent of preference, right? It spreads it out, spreads it out evenly. Um, real surfaces don't do that. They don't emit radiation diffuse, diffusely like a black body, but they can come close. Um, in addition to diffuse emitters, you can also have diffuse ref reflectors as opposed to spectral reflectors where the incident radiation is reflected off in a specific direction. You can also have diffuse transmitters so that the light is transmitted in all directions evenly instead of one direction more, uh, more strongly. Um, but in this class, we're only going to focus on diffuse emitters. All right. Well, I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in class.